All right, so thank you, uh, 121, for having me back to speak for the first time uh, since June 2017 here, and then to moderate a great panel with uh, many of my lithium friends. When 121 invited me here five years ago, it was the first time I ever spoke publicly about lithium at a conference. I had recently launched a ja in January 2017 my newsletter, RK Equities Lithium Bull, which evolved from a series of detailed emails I had written explaining why Western Lithium, now Lithium Americas, was a screaming buy. Having learned the junior mining promotion game at the knee of the master, Robert Friedland, and the original Ivanhoe Mines in Mongolia, I've been investing and advising companies in the lithium space since 2009. For the first seven years, through 2016, I advocated strongly for a single client, Western Lithium, headed by Friedland protege Jay Shemalaskis, who successfully had built and sold one of the largest gold mines in Canada, in China. Western Lithium Americas has grown from 10 million market cap to nearly $4 billion over this time frame, and is on the cusp of first lithium production in Argentina, partnered with China's Ganfeng. I joined Twitter five years ago last month, in September 2017, and just celebrated a milestone of 10,000 followers. Not as good as uh, Tolga's over there. Through Twitter and LinkedIn posts, I met my business partner, Rodney Hooper, in South Africa in 2018, who was similarly publishing his thoughts about the irreplaceable element for the electric era. Rodney suggested we bring the lithium bull to life with a podcast. We launched Lithium Ion Rocks in January 2019. 18 months later, with everyone glued to screens once COVID hit in early 2020, we launched Rockstock Channel on YouTube. As Tesla went parabolic, Elon Musk implored the world to mine more nickel and signed an offtake agreement with Piedmont Lithium. Rockstock Channel hit 5,000 subscribers this week, but we're looking for exponential growth. Rockstock Channel hit 5,000 subscribers this week, but we're looking for exponential growth and a stretch goal of 20,000 subscribers by next July. We encourage all of you in this audience and all the viewers who will be watching this presentation on Rockstock Channel shortly to register your email at rkequity.com, to follow me on Twitter at Lithium Ion Bull, and to subscribe to Rockstock Channel on YouTube. The next two slides were taken from that June 2017 one to one presentation. I articulated why high lithium prices were likely to persist for many years, why supernormal 50 to 75% EBITDA margins were also likely to persist, why lithium demand would grow at five to seven times GDP growth rates as far as the eye can see, translating into rapid industry revenue and EBITDA growth. My suggested 10 to 13 billion revenue in seven years looks to be massively wrong. Industry revenues could be three times as high this year with lithium at nearly 700,000 tons and prices in the $50 to $75,000 a ton range. I was similarly conservative in my forecasts for total, sorry, I was similarly conservative in my forecast for total lithium equity market cap. I suggested 500% growth in seven years to 90 to 138 billion with lithium prices in the 12 to $16,000 range. As of last month's RK Equity scoreboard, total lithium equity market cap is already $114 billion. Underpinning my equity market valuation assumptions then was that historic mid-teens EBITDA multiples would hold, meaning 90 to 140 billion market cap could be reached at prices vastly below current lithium prices. Today's $114 billion number is impressive, but it reflects either a significant multiple derating to the single digits, similar to traditional base and bulk commodities, or a disbelief that super high prices are sustainable and that valuations are discounting the expectation that prices will collapse to the mid-teens again. While lithium prices may fall some, we do not expect them to crash. Likewise, lithium's criticality, lithium's speciality, lithium's irreplaceability, and lithium's hypergrowth mean that the 17 times growth multiple that Rockwood paid for Talazin in 2013 and the 14, 14 times Albemarle paid for Rockwood in 2015 are likely to return. M&A by Strategics is accelerating. Big miners like Rio Tinto, which paid $862 million for a technically challenged brine acid in Argentina in December, 
Big Oil, Coke Industries invested $350 million in two direct lithium extraction stories in the United States. Ford is lending $300 million to an Australian spodumene developer. GM arranged a $200 million prepay with producer Livent. I expect more and bigger M&A and financing checks to come from Big Auto, Big Battery, Big Chemical, Big Utility, as well as more from Big Mining and Big Oil. We are a few years away from a top-of-the-cycle 2008 Rio Alcan moment in lithium, with substantial equity upside and equity financings to come, in my opinion. Last June, as lithium prices were rising, but lithium equities were falling, I suggested Mr. Market had presented a gift, and began my higher love narrative in homage to Steve Winwood in 1986. I reiterated the theme last September, and in a second video with Rodney in February of this year. Higher love, again. Ahead of July 4th this year, I took a page from the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Not all commodities are created equal. Commodity equities follow commodity prices. Go long what China is short. Go long what Tesla is short. Tesla's Gigafactory 1 in Nevada was a watershed event in 2014 and 15. It prompted Goldman Sachs to call lithium the new gasoline in December 2015. Lithium boomed from 2015 to 17, what I've called almost famous lithium 2.0. Elon Musk has often dismissed lithium, the salt of the salad of battery materials. But in Tesla's Q1 conference call, he and Drew Baglino mentioned the word lithium a full 27 times. In Q2, they mentioned lithium 24 times, and have since announced plans for a hydroxide refinery in Texas. Tesla's comments and actions are the most bullish indicators for lithium I've ever heard or read. In mid-May, Albemarle, SQM, and other producers were at or near all-time higher love. After retracing over the summer, ALB and SQM and several other producers and near producers hit all-time higher love last month. Guidance from all lithium producers on demand, supply, and pricing are exceptionally bullish. Lithium is the new software. Do you like minting money? Well, the lithium business is for you, according to Elon Musk. Lucky Lithium Lucky Lithium. Again, words spoken in April by Elon and Drew Baglino were more bullish lithium than ever th anything they've ever said before. Mining and refining lithium is a limiting factor, the biggest cost growth item. Without big increases in extraction and refinement, prices will be driven to high levels. Into 2030, eight years, we need everybody to do more in the lithium space. At conferences like this, I never make many friends when I say gold is old. But life, lithium, and iron ore is good. Besides COVID, I haven't attended this one-to-one -one conference or Beaver Creek and many other conferences which tend to be dominated by the gold investment community. This table says a lot about the return of various commodities this year, over three years and since January 2017, more than five years. GDX, the gold ETF, the great old inflation hedge, has not kept up with inflation. Dr. Copper has been okay, but we've been waiting a very long time for the price to rise so high that we'll need a telescope to see it, to steal a phrase from my friend Robert Friedland. You need a telescope to see the lithium price. Uranium. I'm encouraged by all the positive nuclear noises coming from Washington and Europe. I'm hoping we'll reach you know, 2011 pre-Fukushima time again. I own URA and COPX and GDX in small size. PIC is a big cap mining ETF. It's been hurt a bit by recession fears, but I do believe a super cycle is coming to commodities generally, and, and that should be a good place to, to put some money. Alcoa as an aluminum proxy and XLE as an upstream oil ETF, they've done all right, but these will forever be low multiple cyclical plays. Steel, Nucor, or proxy, continues to benefit from Trump tariffs that Biden is not rushing to dismantle. 
while Fortescue, an iron ore proxy, has substantially benefited from oligopolistic positioning and a more resilient steel market that analysts continue to wrongly predict will collapse. But Albemarle and SQM look at those returns over one, three, and five years. Lithium is the new gold. Lithium is the new oil. Lithium is the new software. SQM Aramco, the Saudi Arabia of lithium. Chile's government, following a hard-fought negotiation, fundamentally incentivized SQM in 2018 to grow volumes as quickly as possible. Regulator Corfu substantially increased SQM's quota for lithium extraction, but limited the company's concession to 2030. SQM, in turn, has ramped up production fast, with meaningful success. Unlike its peer Albemarle, SQM acted without market discipline, through the COVID downturn nearly tripling quarterly production in 2020, which helped to crash the lithium price temporarily, which is on the left-hand side there. But note, SQM's volumes have continued to grow to a run rate approaching 150,000 tons per year, up from 50,000 a few years ago. That's amazing growth. That's astonishing growth. But as Tesla's parabolic rise has catalyzed massive investments by OEMs everywhere, SQM's growth, like all incumbents, can't keep up. Hence, the 10 times increase in price in just 18 months, from Q4 2020 to Q2 2022. Rock God, Spodgmin Software, Chris Ellison of Mineral Resources. Contrary to Elon Musk's exhortations that lithium refining is where the margin is, the bottleneck is actually upstream to the raw material. China is long conversion capacity, but short spodumene feed. The marginal producers are unintegrated converters to the right of this cost curve that must purchase spodumene on market. Mineral resources is like the BHP or Rio of spodumene in Western Australia. Chris Ellison's a rock god. If you're down in the black and you own rock in the ground, you're god. If you don't own your rock, you literally are screwed by us, is what he said a month ago at his annual meeting. Spodumene Software. Lithium unicorns. How many unicorns have been created in gold in the last five years? In copper, in oil, or any other commodity? On the Archaeequity scoreboard, a full dozen companies have grown from early stage explorers below 25 million market cap to US dollar unicorns. In some cases, three, five, or even 10 billion market caps. Lucky lithium, the limiting factor, the irreplaceable element. Are inflation and rising interest rates good or bad for commodity equities? For lithium, during the four-year period from two thousand June 2003 to June 2004, the two-year Treasury yield quadrupled from 1.25 to 5%, 375 basis points. BHP Billiton, to pick one bellwether big cap miner during this period, quintupled from less than $7 to $35. During the 27-month period from July 2016 to October 2018, the two-year yield quadrupled again from a lower base of 0.67 to 2.86%, 219 basis points. BHP rose again from 72% from $23 to $40. In contrast, from May 2011 to August 2016, a five-year period where rates remained below 1%, BHP fell by more than 50% from $62 to $23. We live in unprecedented times, and no one could say with certainty whether these correlations of interest rates to commodity equity performance will hold. Are we about to experience 1980s-style stagflation led by oil commodity price shocks? Structurally higher costs due to deglobalization and developing less China-Asia-focused supply chains? Or is Kathy Wood of ARK Invest right that disruptive innovation is fundamentally deflationary, most notably reflected by Elon Musk achieving his core goal for Tesla to become the world's greatest manufacturing company? Time will tell, but it looks to me that rising interest rates are not an impediment to rising lithium equities. 
Big Money Biden Act, the industrial policy equals battery metal inflation. I'm skeptical that the Inflation Reduction Act will reduce inflation, but it is very much a climate bill with substantial incentives and money on both demand and supply side in support of the EV energy transition. This is an unexpected tailwind to the lithium thematic that is yet to be fully understood by the market. This topic is too broad to discuss in detail here, but Archae Equity is producing a lot of content on USA's industrial policy, and we'd strongly encourage you to watch our recent and future videos covering these developments. A Declaration of Lithium Independence, a big, hairy, audacious goal. The 2020s will continue to be the lithium decade. Can North America grow from just 15,000 tons of chemical capacity to 1 million to 1 million ton supply over the next 10 to 15 years? This would equate to about 30% of the 3.2 million ton global LCE market, which Albemarle is forecasting will hit by 2030. And it will require at least 30 to 40 billion in investment. Each of the regions and some of the companies in the USA and Canada on this slide can produce 50,000 to 200,000 tons or more. Piedmont Lithium, joining on the next panel, has articulated credible plans for 60,000 tons of hydroxide from spodumene from two 30,000 ton plants in Tennessee and North Carolina. Startups like Emily Hirsch's Luna Lithium, also on the next panel, could emerge as a future Piedmont, identifying and developing new resources with the drill bit. With Elon Musk capitulating into buying Twitter, will he now turn his attention to Lucky Lithium? In one Rockstock Channel video that went viral, I speculated about Elon Musk's Master Plan 3. If Tesla buys Albemarle, it's game over. I encourage you all to watch this and our other videos. And please subscribe to Rockstock Channel on YouTube and follow Lithium Ion Rocks on Twitter. I'm always in search for fresh classic rock music material as I narrate Lithium Bull. I conclude today with an homage to the Tedeschi Trucks Band, which I will see at the Beacon Theater in a few hours' time. Lithium, bound for glory. Please note, RK Equity is not a financial advisor and nothing I've said should be construed as investment or financial advice. This slide highlights clients we've worked with in the battery material space over the past 13 years. And this disclaimer highlights all our current clients and equities we hold interests in. Thanks very much for listening.